I will talk about a project I've been working on during the last year. And I like, uh, well, the project is about simulating percolation models, which are basically uh, mathematical models. But, um, well, first of all, I'm from Argentina, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> First of all, I want to share my experience uh, before speaking about percolation. Um, I started this project with a problem, a description of a problem, right? I did this project with uh, two mathematicians and they have um, some conjecture about some problem and then, uh, well, uh, I decided to implement a simulator for supporting uh, their conjecture, right? So the thing is, I have a question, a problem and a question. And I started looking for a result, okay? And then I got some result, good result maybe in the field of percolation. Um, and of course, because it, 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 um, it was my graduation thesis. But, um, but then I realized that the most important result was not the numerical result or the support for the conjecture, but the possibility of um, inviting mathematicians to ask new questions. So my way was starting with a question, and then when I find when I found an answer, I realized that the most important thing was not the, the answer, but uh, new questions because it's the way of uh, investigating at least this kind of uh, problems. Uh, in that sense, uh, we thought that uh, the simulator is uh, like a, a kind of a virtual lab in which mathematicians interested in percolation, in this case, can play uh, with uh, different components of um, the problem and then extract, uh, analyze uh, the problem or the, the models, and then extract some conclusion. Well, now about percolation. Percolation mainly deals with propagation, propagation of um, any kind of substance uh, through random media. Uh, for example, a group of people in a country or whatever, or propagation of fire through a forest. Another application is oil and gas distribution um, supporting porosity analysis in this case. Well, this is more specific than gelation and polymerization is another application of percolation. Well, percolation was born in the um, 50s with two, when, when two guys, a mathematician and an engineer, um, were studying different problems, but uh, they, um, well, they realized that uh, it was the same problem. And that the original problem can be postulated um, in this way. Imagine that you immerse a rock, a porous rock, into a bucket of water, and then the question is, what is the probability that the water reaches the center of the rock? So, in order to answer this question, they have proposed I'm sorry, a mathematical model. This is the simplest model. Okay, imagine for a second that the rock is in two dimensions, right? And then we said just a grid of points. In this case, uh, there are points in C square, which basically are um, integer coordinates, right? And then we join both, uh, two of them with an edge if they are at the distance of one, right? So we get a grid. This is, uh, the, the term is lattice. This is lattice. It's just a graph. Okay, and then we just assign a probability to each edge. For example, a probability P of being open and a probability one less P of being closed. And then we define just um, 
some notions like uh, an open path, which is just a path of open edges, and then an open cluster uh, from a particular point B, which is just a set of points reachable from uh, the point B using open path. Okay? And then percolation mainly deals with the formation or the existence existence of percolating clusters. In this case we are working with a finite grid. Percolation theory works uh, mainly with um, infinite widths, but that's because of uh, physical um, convenience. But a percolating cluster is just a cluster that crosses the entire grid from, in this case, uh, upside down from, from the top uh, line of nodes to the bottom line. <coughs> so this is just the definition, right? Uh, the percolating cluster is just the cluster that crosses the grid or lattice. Um, there are many, many kinds of models depending on their uh, structure, for example, connections uh, could be, well, with using different patterns like uh, bow tie, etc. Or, for example, depending on the uh, element of being open, I've said that um, we are assigning probabilities to edges, but uh, we can uh, either assign probabilities to nodes uh, anyway. And, of course, dimensions. Uh, I said that uh, we can think of, in, in the first step, the rock as in two dimensions, but it's uh, more suitable to think it, uh, in three dimensions, because the rock is in three dimensions, so models in three dimensions and n dimensions are also possible to, to be built. So, there are uh, just uh, a few facts about this model, uh, which can result uh, sort of um, intuitive. Um, if we think as uh, the probability of some point, uh, a given point, to belong uh, to a percolating cluster as a function of our parameter p, it's easy to see that uh, if the parameter, the value of p is zero, no, no cluster, no percolating cluster will exist, so the probability this function will um, be zero also. On the other hand, is if the value of p is one, every edge will be open. So it surely be um, appear uh, percolating cluster, and so this function will be one. So uh, it doesn't matter. It's just to, to say that uh, there is a value uh, between zero and one at which uh, this uh, function, probability function, uh, stops being zero and becomes positive. So. Uh, this value is called critical probability. That's why this, uh, this is a phase transition phenomenon. But um, the importance of uh, PC, well, the, the big question here, or the important question here is what is the value of PC? Why? Because it's, it is mathematically proven that if this function is positive, the probability of the existence of a percolating cluster is 1. So, for example, imagine the case of propagation of fire in a region, um, in a forest, um, and we have a model of percolation to, for that situation. If we are on the right side of PC, with our probability in the physical model, uh, and I start fire at one, three, it doesn't matter what we do, we, we won't be able to stop the fire. It means that the fire will cross the entire region, right? So this is like a threshold. 
If we are at the right side of PC, uh, the probability of the existence of a percolating cluster is 1. So it is very important to know for a given model what, what the value of PC is. So um, the simulation becomes very useful for that. So the, this is just a table of the known critical probabilities and um, for example, the simplest model I have shown previously, which is the square bond percolation model, is um, 0 0.5. Um, percolation problems um, has, have the, um, the, the aspect of characteristic that they are very hard to prove mathematically. So. This is one of the reasons for simulating. For example, the square ball percolation mode, um, it took mathematicians around uh, about 15 years to, to prove uh, mathematically this uh, value. I mean, maybe the conjectures on are easy to, to claim or to state, but uh, they are very hard to prove mathematically. So um, simulation becomes um, very helpful. Of course, clues for a formal proof and um, more important applications to practical cases. Okay. Well, simulating uh, percolation. Um, at least for me, includes uh, different areas of interest, such as how to represent be a very large uh, graphs into the computer, or how to explore graphs. Okay. And simulation uh, works uh, in this way. Just. Uh, we have uh, values for input variables, we define some variables and we uh, have some values for those variables and, and then they become an input of the simulation and then we get some output uh, values for output variables. For example, one uh, input variable could be uh, the parameter p, the probability of an edge in the basic case of being open and the output a variable of interest could be the function theta which is the, the function I've shown before. Uh, the simulation process uh, works in this way. So the, the, the first <coughs> thing uh, we should do is to build a model. Build a model is uh, construct, represent uh, in some way the big or large graph into the computer and then assign um, probabilities in, or values. I mean, uh, decide with some probability if one edge is open or not. Is this, that's the random configuration. And then uh, the third step is looking for a percolating cluster, right? <coughs> and, well, making some statistics about the results of the output variables. So this is just a picture of the whole process. Now I will jump to the simulator to, just to show you a sample. This is the main, main window of the simulator. And um, at the left side of the window, we define the model, okay? In this case, well, we can choose uh, one of the two big families of models, form or site percolation, being one of uh, the edge uh, and the other, the, the, the nodes. Uh, and then we define uh, the dimensions of the model and the size, in this case we are working in the square lattice, which is two dimensions, and the size of the lattice, and then we define the pattern. I, I, in this, 
I, I, in this uh, case, we have many known partners, and, and then some new partners. I, I have been studied uh, for my work. But, um, for example, if we are working with a square pattern, we can uh, just uh, run a single simulation. Here, um, on the right side of the window, we can see the result of the simulations. In this case, I just run a simulation in the same way I, I have explained before. Uh, the model is built and then uh, random configuration is uh, applied to the model and then the search of a percolating cluster proceeds more or less like this. Um, Well, uh, be before, before that, here we, we obtain the result of the simulation uh, in terms of um, the existence of a percolating cluster, right? Here we see that uh, no percolating cluster was found. But the search consists uh, basically on starting from each node, of each of the top nodes, in, the, in this case, we the simulator just expands the clusters and checks if uh, each of them reaches the bottom of the lattice, right? So we can try again and again and remember that uh, the critical um, proven probability for this model is 0 0.5 because, well, it is. Um, so maybe the half of the times we will get a no answer and, and the other a yes. In the case of a yes, well, we, we can check what uh, the percolating cluster is. So um, we can play changing the value of the probability, for example, 0 0.3, and maybe the most of the times it will never it will never find a, a percolating cluster. Of course, if we go to the other side of the noun critical probability, it will find a percolating cluster the most of the times. But uh, instead of just clicking this uh, a hundred of times, uh, we can I, I build just a tool for doing that. For doing that. Uh, which basically uh, simulates this model uh, with a condition for stopping and a condition for um, decreasing an upper limit and increasing a lower limit. And as we can see, uh, this gives an idea of where the critical probability is Okay, we can continue the search and of course the bigger the model, the bigger the lattice, the more valuable the results. Uh, another tool or another simulation we can run here is take some of the input variables and make, uh, make it change or uh, its value from some starting value to another and specifying some, some step. Okay. And um, here we can see that this, this um, simulated values uh, have the same shape of the function uh, I've shown you before. Remember? Okay, this is not math mathematical proven that the function has this shape, but they, mathematicians, believe that this function has this shape. But um, what it is important is that the last value uh, is 0 0.5. Um, 
this uh, gives uh, another idea where the critical probability is. Okay. And then, uh, well, um, we can change the pattern and try all this uh, stuff with different patterns and different kind of iterative simulations. Uh, or, for example, we can use um, different probabilities for different um, directions, which are another kind of uh, models and, uh, well, work with this new model, okay? Or use, for example, we can create a new pattern and, and then work with, with it, okay? In this sense, I believe that, um, well, in fact, the, the day I presented this at uh, my university, the jury started uh, asking you questions of the form, why don't you try this? What if it, we, we combine uh, this uh, probability with this uh, pattern and with, with this... Uh, uh, so, for that reason, I believe that uh, this um, tool, this environment, um, is uh, very useful for, for, for them. And in fact, I, I had, uh, at the, the, the beginning of the project, I had the possibility to just write an algorithm to compute uh, what we were looking for. Uh, but as uh, and as a small talker, I decided to describe the problem is, instead of just uh, writing a couple of procedures. So, so my experience or my the message I want to convey is just uh, this that uh, programming with a solution. Uh, in mind may lead to answers, but uh, describing the models or describing the problem uh, will surely lead to new questions, which is uh, for me the most important thing. So, okay. if you have any questions.